So uh, I'm going to present our work on dependency or incident linking in large cloud system. This is a joint work with uh, Karish, Jimmy, Chetan, Rakesh, Mohit, and Shravan from Microsoft. Despite significant effort, cloud services still faces outages or incidents. And these incidents can be significantly costly in terms of uh, economic loss to the company due to service level agreement violations and customer dissatisfaction. Furthermore, uh, the on-call engineers spend a significant amount of uh, human effort in resolving these incidents. Words, in many cases, due to service dependencies, uh, one incident might have a cascading effect and it can lead to multiple incidents within a short span of time. So if we can uh, cluster those incidents into a single group, then uh, we can definitely reduce the human effort from the on-call engineer. So one engineer can solve all the incidents together. Furthermore, we have seen that uh, usually the time to mitigate uh, these linked incidents is usually higher than uh, the other incidents. So uh, efficient uh, sim uh, incident similarity uh, model can actually reduce the overall time to mitigate those incidents as well. The existing uh, solutions uh, for incident similarity prediction usually leverages only um, incident textual and contextual information. However, those models uh, fail significantly when the similar incidents are coming from different services or from different workloads. So to address this issue, we also somehow need to integrate the dependency service dependency information into our model. However, this is a challenging task. And in this work, we are primarily trying to address three research questions. First, how we can generate uh, uh, efficient uh, global dependency graph from this uh, large scale cloud, uh, cloud services and, um, and, and whether adding those dependency graph can actually improve the accuracy of these linking models. Secondly, how to efficiently um, combine the textual and graphical information together to train an efficient ML model. And thirdly, we also wanted to test out how the performance varies for uh, similar incidents that are coming from, uh, coming from the same services, different services, as well as from different workloads. So to, to generate the dependency graph, uh, we have considered uh, five major workloads from Microsoft um, that, that, that has uh, given us like 610 unique services. And then we have uh, first generated a partial dependency graph by leveraging uh, our internal uh, data from dependency tracking tool that kind of uh, leverages um, Azure graphs as well as uh, shared subscription information and uh, and the, the DNS calls and everything. So, so they kind of stored those uh, partial dependency information among the services. And then we augment that dependency graph with uh, historical manually linked, um, uh, uh, from the historically manually linked incidents as well. And that, that gives uh, us a total of around 5,500 ages into the global dependency graph. So uh, to create the local view for each services, we first generate a subgraph for each of the unique services by just considering three hub uh, neighborhood distance. And then we use a, net, uh, a node to vec technique for the initial graph transformation. Now in our model or architecture, there are two modules. One is the textual module, another is a graphical module. So for textual module, we have considered the incident uh, title, topology, and some categorical variables like owning team, monitor ID, and failure types. And then we pass them through LSTM layers and then combine their embeddings to generate the final text embedding. For the graph embedding, we have used several uh, SOTA graph representation techniques that I'll talk later. Um, but the main problem here is that due to the misalignment between uh, the embeddings of text and graphs, uh, we, we observe that a direct concatenation of these two embeddings usually performs really badly. So that's why we proposed uh, a technique called orthogonal procrasticities. So what it does is that it, uh, it computes a affinity or orthogonal matrix, and then it uses that matrix to project the text embeddings into the graph embedding space. And then we can concatenate them together to, uh, to boost the performance. So for experiments, uh, we, have, uh, we have taken historical uh, similar incident links from, uh, uh, from five workloads within Microsoft uh, from 2022. 
uh, and then we divide it into uh, train test and validation data. And then for each incident, we have uh, cons uh, we have created a triplet, which has a positive uh, similar incident example and a randomly picked negative samples. And then for training the model, we have used triplet loss to uh, uh, that that is being optimized. And uh, we have considered our method with three benchmark approaches. First one is the baseline that is using only the textual uh, information. Second one directly concatenates the textual and uh, graph embeddings together. Uh, the third one is a leader method, which is a recently proposed method that basically computes the similarity score from uh, textual and graphical modules uh, separately and then take a convex combination of those two scores. And for our DI-Link method, we have three different versions. One is using graph convolution network for the graph representation. Second one is using graph attention network and third one is using graph sage. So this is the, the, the main results. What you observed is that uh, overall, um, the concatenation model uh, performs really badly. It is even uh, performing uh, worse than the baseline textual model. With leader, uh, we, are, we are getting slightly um, better performance, about 1% gain in the accuracy and F1 score. But when we use this orthogonal procrasticity and, and do the alignment, then with our DI-Link method, we are able to get around 14 to 15% gain in the F1 score and, um, and accuracy. And we are able to reach about 0.95 uh, F1 score. We observe similar patterns uh, when you consider uh, the, uh, the, uh, the incident pairs that are coming from within service, cross service, and cross workload uh, pairs. And um, uh, the only thing is for cross workload incidents, we found that DI link with graph sets uh, slightly outperforms graph attention network, but in general, uh, graph attention networks performs better uh, for other cases. And we also observe that uh, the performance of a model uh, varies significantly uh, with this uh, with these three input parameters. The first one is is how many hops we want to consider uh, within the subgraph. So if we make it very less, then it will have a sort of uh, a very localized view and it will not consider its neighbors. That is not very good. But if we make it high, then the, the view will be very similar to the global dependency graph and it will not be able to distinguish between different services. So I, we found that the ideal sweet spot is when we consider uh, three hop distance. And the performance also varies uh, with uh, uh, with the embedding dimensions of these input uh, input graphs, and uh, and we also tested the performance, and and as expected, we we find that if we randomly remove some edges from the global dependency graph, then also the performance uh, uh, degrades quite a lot. So we have also uh, deployed our model into the uh, production system within Microsoft, um, uh, and basically what we did is that. We first train the model and host it into a, a, a AML platform as an endpoint. And for each new incident uh, in a real time fashion, when a new incident comes, we just create its embedding by calling that endpoint. And we compare that embedding with uh, the previous incidents that have happened within the last four hours of time window. And if we find some similar incidents, then we, uh, we show those recommendations into the ICM portal that is uh, directly used by the on-call engineers and they can actually give us a feedback about whether those links are correct or not. And we can use those uh, feedback data to improve this model. So in summary, uh, we found that leveraging dependency graph uh, data is very important for improving the accuracy of these incident links. And um, an alignment with this orthogonal progressivity method can actually provide a boost in the performance and we are able to achieve a 14% gain by using this method. So in future, uh, we want to evaluate the performance of this DI-Link model uh, on the customer reported inc incidents as well, and also wanted to test uh, whether um, uh, how much scale uh, we can uh, get with this method, uh, because in general, if we consider hyperscale cloud services like Microsoft, then this graph can grow uh, until uh, like tens of thousands of nodes, right? So how much scalability we can gain. And uh, finally, we also want to see how we can leverage this kind of DI-Link models to solve other similar AI ops tasks like triaging or root causing and so on. Um, thank you. And just a quick note that our team in Microsoft is 
hiring researchers and interns. So if you are interested, uh, please uh, get in touch with me or, or please send an email to this, uh, this ID. Thank you so much.